Welcome to Building Programs, Building Brains, Diversity and English Language Development for Grades Kindergarten to 8. This training was developed by BossNet in partnership with UMass Boston, with funding from the Massachusetts Department of Early Education and Care, and Brain Building is in progress. At any time, you can hover over any of these logos to learn more. This is Interactive Presentation 2, Learning Styles and Learning Needs. Each of us interact with and absorb information in different ways. But what's more, each of us interact with and absorb information in different ways, different times. So certain kinds of information might be easier for me to learn by reading, whereas other kinds might be easier for me to learn by doing. And then you, for instance, might find that in those same situations, you do better with watching someone else do something or hearing something about it. As we think about ways to support a variety of different learning styles and learning needs, we need to be able to broaden our thinking so that we can imagine a wide, wide array of different types of activities and interactions that children can have so that they can connect with new ideas and new information in as many different ways as possible and therefore really own those ideas, those concepts, and that information. We'll learn more about how to do this as we progress, but for now, let's take a look at what some of the different ways to learn are. LSI, or Learning Styles Inventory, is a common framework for understanding the ways in which people, including kids, um, absorb and interact with information. There are three main learning styles in LSI. The first is auditory learners, um, who learn primarily through hearing, um, listening, and sounds. The second is visual learners, and they learn primarily by looking at or seeing or watching. Um, that includes reading. Um, and the third is tactile kinesthetic learners, who learn primarily through experiencing, moving, trying, feeling, uh, tracing, etc. It's important to remember that a person may be more auditory in one situation and more visual in a different situation, for instance. So we can all have components of all three, but one of the things that the LSI proposes is that each person, including each child, has one of these three learning styles that they're generally going to be the most comfortable with. Auditory learners tend to be really good at remembering things that they hear, uh, as well as things that they say to other people uh, because of that hearing element. Uh, auditory learners tend to particularly benefit from discussion, whether it be a whole large group discussion or a small group discussion, and whether they're talking in the discussion or whether they're listening to other people discuss. Uh, or auditory learners also tend to remember um, oral instructions very well, um, so if you tell an auditory learner a list of steps to do or things to complete. They tend to be able to hold on to the items in that list um, better than other learning styles, and they tend to understand information best when they hear it. Um, some of the strategies that can be helpful for auditory learners are listed on the slide here. Um, they generally sort of focus around making sure that there is a sound element, a hearing element, to the learning component. So um, talking about things, reciting things out loud, presenting things orally, recording and playing back recordings, um, listening to um, goals being said out loud or repeating them, um, and even looking through texts and talking about uh, what you think the book might be about or what you think might happen in this chapter prior to reading, so that even though the reading itself is visual, that the auditory learner has that sort of uh, exploration and discussion as a framework for tethering down what they find when they're doing their reading. Visual learners uh, tend to remember best what they see, um, and that may include images, and it also might include anything that is either read or written. Um, visual learners tend to really like uh, presentations or visual projects. They tend to like diagrams, maps, and charts. Um, they tend to understand and relate to information well when they see it. A kind of classic mark of a visual learner is if you're trying to remember some piece of information that you read in a book, you could picture where on the page that information was as you're trying to recall it. Um, common strategies uh, for visual learners include trying to represent information in a way that can be looked at or seen. Um, so that means either presenting the information visually or having students write or draw about what they are learning or doing. 
Um, with visual learners, it makes a difference uh, in most cases whether the student is looking at the person that is talking to them. With the other two learning styles, it tends to make a lot less of a difference um, if the student is looking at the person. Um, so visual learners also tend to do better when they can learn in a quiet environment um, with some kind of soft music or earplugs if they're getting distracted easily. Um, it's good for a visual learner to know that they're allowed to ask you to repeat yourself if you're mostly conveying your information by speaking, which is an auditory um, learning style, because um, sometimes it can be harder for a visual learner to translate that into something they can hold on to. Um, having students cover up um, notes or concepts or have flashcards, um, highlighting, um, covering things up and reviewing them, um, and being able to be where there are less other visual distractions are all strategies that tend to help. And then using any kind of a visual aid, whether it be a two-dimensional visual aid like a chart uh, or a movie or a poster um, or a three-dimensional visual aid like a globe or a model is a very helpful thing for visual learners. Tactile kinesthetic learners tend to be the most underserved and under-supported learners in most sort of traditional classroom environments. So it's really worth putting some thought into whether you're including a tactile or kinesthetic component into the lessons and activities that you plan. Tactile kinesthetic learners learn best um, by experiencing. They remember what they do, what they feel, what they experience in their hands or in their bodies, um, both through movement and through touch. Tactile kinesthetic learners tend to like using tools. They tend to like um, having practical applications where they're doing something or trying something. They tend to have good motor memory, which means that after they do something, it's easier for them to remember how to do it again. Um, and they tend to be more coordinated uh, than other learning styles or learning types. Um, some strategies that can be used to help tactile or kinesthetic learners. Um, having uh, kids move around the room um, while they're learning different ideas or different concepts can really help. Like if you go stand by the bookcase while you're talking about um, the vocabulary words and then later when you're uh, practicing concepts you go over um, by the toy bins and then you go into the dramatic play area when you're talking about characters from the story that you've read. Um, the association of the physical movement with the concept can really help anchor that new information. Um, sometimes tactile kinesthetic learners learn best when they're allowed to move a little bit um, if they're supposed to focus during a listening uh, or a reading or writing activity. So having um, toys, um, like a koosh ball or a tennis ball, uh, or having little uh, movements that are allowed, like a little task to move your fingers or your toes um, while listening, um, can, can be very helpful. Tactile kinesthetic learners may not be as comfortable learning when they're sitting in a more traditional position, like at a desk or in a chair. So allowing them to sit on a beanbag chair or on cushions on the floor or even to lay on their bellies um, during learning might be more helpful. Um, having music in the background can also be helpful. Research shows that classical music and especially Baroque music is um, useful, but I have known tactile kinesthetic learners who learn their best to heavy metal or rap, so um, experiment around a little bit with what's appropriate in your program and see if you can find something helpful. Um, there's an interesting research study showing that kids who are strong tactile kinesthetic learners um, remember information better when they read it through colored transparencies, um, like the red or the yellow or the blue sort of gels or colored transparencies that used to get used a lot on overhead projectors. Um, you can get them at like a Staples um, store or any place like that. So that's something to experiment with if um, you're working with kids who are tactile kinesthetic and are having trouble retaining stuff that they've learned. Um, for memorization, um, have kids who are tactile kinesthetic either close their eyes and imagine redoing the information or have them imagine writing words or concepts on the surface of their hand or in the air with their finger with their eyes closed. Um, that can really help the closing their eyes and picturing. Um, also closing your eyes and trying to remember hearing it or seeing it um, can make a really big difference. Another helpful framework for understanding different learning styles and learning needs is Gardiner's multiple intelligences. So this theory posits that there are eight different kinds of intelligence and each one is a continuum. So it's not like a pick one. It's that each of us has different levels of intelligence in all these different areas. And what you want to do is find which areas are the most comfortable areas 
uh, for a particular student and try to present information in ways that speak to the existing intelligences, but also try to build comfort and skills in those areas that are more challenging for that particular child. Um, so the eight different intelligences are linguistic intelligence, which is um, a facility with words, um, whether it be speaking, reading, or listening. Um, logical mathematical intelligence, which is numbers and math, of course, but it's also reasoning. So solving mysteries or riddles or puzzles all fit into that logical mathematical category. Um, spatial intelligence, the ability to understand two-dimensional and three-dimensional representations and pictures. Bodily kinesthetic, which is similar to tactile kinesthetic. It's that sort of movement and experiential uh, intelligence. Musical intelligence, which is self-explanatory. Interpersonal intelligence, the ability to understand other people. Intrapersonal intelligence, which is your self-awareness, your understanding of your own uh, emotions and thought processes. And naturalist or nature intelligence. So there are different types of activities that you can plan that sort of play to the strengths or build skill areas in each of the different types of intelligences. And when you're planning an activity, the ideal um, when you're trying to get kids engaged in learning is to make sure that you have multiple different components so that kids can kind of self-select to whichever approach to learning is going to be the most helpful for them. So for instance, for linguistic learning, um, reading, writing, um, speaking, listening, doing word puzzles or crosswords or uh, letter unscrambles or letter scrambles, those kinds of things can be helpful. For logical mathematical, having riddles, having mysteries, having number problems. Um, for spatial learning, physical puzzles. Um, how can you most easily fit these things into this space? Or take this two-dimensional model and make it into a three-dimensional thing using these supplies. Um, bodily kinesthetic, um, experiencing, trying, um, dancing, playing, moving kinds of experiences. Um, musical can include listening to music, it can include creating or playing music, and it can also include setting things to rhythms or patterns of sound. Uh, interpersonal means, you know, giving the kids opportunities to empathize with, like for instance, a character in a story or imagine what it might have been like or felt like in that situation, or to have social experiences where they're interacting with others around the information in teamwork or collaborative experiences. Intrapersonal, looking at yourself, sharing about yourself, thinking about what you would have done in a particular situation or what strengths you might have that could have played into that situation or why it might have been hard for you. Um, Etc. And the naturalist um, giving opportunities to try something out uh, in nature, to interact with animals or plants. Okay, so choose one correct answer. Which of the following is not one of the learning styles from the learning styles inventory? <laughs> 